Before we implement business rules in JDeveloper for our tutorial, let's do a quick overview of business rules. A business rule could be any conditional logic you have to write in your application. You can think of a business rule as an if statement of the form if condition, then do some action. Let's look at a couple of examples. If credit score less than 600, reject the loan application. Or if membership equals gold, offer free shipping. You can always code these business rules in your application code. Let's say we wanted to code a rule like this. If credit score less than 600, reject the loan request. So a developer will code this rule in an application, for example, a Java application, and then build, release, and deploy this application. But business rules can change based on a variety of business factors. So let's say the business changes the credit score threshold to 650. Now a developer will have to make code changes in the application and go through the build, release, and deploy process again before the change is effective in the application. So there's a considerable effort involved in making rule changes in the application. Let's see how we do this if you're using a business rules engine. So we have the same rule, if credit score less than 600, reject loan request. In this case, the developer will implement this rule in business rules instead of application code, call the business rule from the application code, and then build, release, and deploy both the application and the business rule. Now let's say the rule changes because of some business factor. Instead of a developer having to make this change, a business user can make this change and publish this change to the production system. Notice that there is no release or deploy of application code when the rules change. Business rules engines allow business users to efficiently manage business rule changes in the system. So the two main takeaways are that when you're using a business rules engine, logic can be changed without needing code redeployment, and business users or business analysts can tweak rules without assistance from developers. Let's look at some of the terminology that's used with Oracle business rules. We'll look at facts first. Let's take a shipping business rule example. If customer membership type is gold, then we offer two day free shipping. Now you can see that the input that this rule takes is a customer object because it's checking the customer membership type. And it's returning an order object type with two day free shipping. Here the customer is called an input fact and the order is called an output fact. Oracle BPM supports different types of facts including XML, Java, ADFPC, and RL. RL is a native type supported by Oracle business rules. So far we have looked at business rules expressed as if statements. Business rules can also be expressed in decision tables. Decision tables are a spreadsheet-like format that let us express multiple rules based on a set of facts. Let's look at an example now. This is the same one that we'll use in our tutorial. All the rules here are defined in terms of the same input facts, total experience and salary expectation. And they return the same output fact, status. There are four rules defined here in terms of these facts. Rule 1 says if total experience is in the inexperienced category, irrespective of the salary expectation, the candidate's status should be rejected. Rule 2 says if the total experience is in the junior category, and if the salary expectation meets the junior salary, then the status should be approved, and so on. If you look at the candidate type XML schema, you'll notice that the total experience element is of integer type. So how do integer values translate to these aliases of 
inexperienced junior mid or senior that brings us to this term called value sets which we'll look at next value sets allow us to use aliases for absolute values or ranges of values this can help to make the rules much more readable and manageable let's look at an example this is the experience level value set that we'll use in our tutorial we've defined aliases for ranges of experience levels besides ranges you can also create value sets for list of values as well as enums if you're using enums in your xml schemas 